This is the Delta V, the first module from a new company called Cosmotronic. And they've taken the concept of a dual attack decay envelope generator and packed a lot of useful features into it, including a pair of VCAs. In this movie, I'm going to review what you can do with it as an envelope generator, because it's very flexible. And then in the next movie, we're going to show what having a VCA built in adds to the equation. It's a dual unit. Left and right sides are identical. There's a jumper inside that takes a trigger to the first input and copies it over to the second input. Plugging something into that second trigger overrides it. I'm going to plug in my trigger right here, take its output, run it through my trusty data to the filter cutoff in the Moog Mother 32. Let's just start up the simple arpeggio and um, we'll have some fun playing around with different speeds and stuff. First off, it's very, very fast. It has a near instantaneous attack and decay. So you get just this little tick right now. So I start to increase the decay time. Get that nice classic exponential decay on the filter. What's nice is that it does have a shape control. Counterclockwise goes to hyper exponential, clockwise goes to linear and then log. So I can make this a very sharp decay, very factual like nice sharp peak and then slow decay. Compared to a normal exponential. A little bit fatter of an attack. I can push it over to linear envelopes. You notice that changing the shape does change the decay times. I can push it to this log, which will give me a sudden fall off. Let's go back to normal exponential. One thing you should be aware of is that the attack shape is the same as the decay shape, not the opposite, like in a classic envelope generator, like in the Moog. So as I start to fade up the attack, you see I get that swoopy reverse playback attack. We'll sharpen up that slope. A little bit more of a bowed feeling compared to a swell. Go to linear, which is as you'd expect. And then log. Gives us that swell attack shape but then that sudden fall off on the decay. If you have a mass, you're probably pretty comfortable with this arrangement of shapes. If you have other more classic generators, like out of the Moog or the Roland, this may seem a little odd initially. It just presents a different set of possibilities. It has a built-in antenuverter, so I can go ahead and right at the front panel, how much envelope is getting out. That's really handy because a Mother 32 does not have an attenuator on its external filter input. I'd have to use up the VC mix control for that. And you can even do an inverted envelope. I'm going to go below zero on data so you're not going to see it, but you can hear the effects pretty clearly. There's also voltage control of the attack and decay times. As a quick example, I'm going to take copy my keyboard pitch and run that to decay so each note gives me a different decay time. Now normally, high notes have a shorter decay than low notes. There is no intent inverter on these inputs, so I'm going to run through utility mixer, take that out to my decay time, and invert it. Maybe cut it back to even more subtle effect. Go a little faster. A little sharper shape. So that's this basic set of features. I'll take my CV out for now, just to keep the following demos pretty clean. Now, normally it is just an attack decay with no sustain. A little bit more level here.
However, if you do want to sustain for as long as you're holding down a key, you move your trigger over to the slew input. Now it takes whatever signal's coming through, be it a gate or anything else in your system, LFOs, etc., and uses the attack and decay as rise and fall times. Pretty cool trick. So now, we'll hold the high level for as long as I'm holding this note. Go for a swell attack. Now the gates out of the Mother 32 are 10 volts. The normal envelope level out of the Delta V by itself is around seven and a half volts, which is similar to the envelope on the Moog or the Roland 540 for that matter. So I can use the Intenu Verter again. Go ahead and bring down the level to wherever I want it to be. And I, of course, slew other signals through it. So instead of bringing the gate through it, I could bring, say, the LFO square wave through it. Do the slew, sustain the node for now. reshape it through what's now a very interesting slew generator. Occasionally I do find that the Delta V stalls on me. I just have to play with the controls a little bit to get it restarted. So that makes it a multifunction module. It's an envelope generator and a slew generator if you want to pass something like a sample and hold signal, etc., through it. The Delta V is capable of being an LFO as well. Both of the channels do have looping controls on them. So if I go ahead and turn my VCA back on again, the speed of the LFO is controlled by the rise fall times. And you have some control over the shape now. Make it a little more sharky. Pretty good audio rates. Make it very peaky. The shape control, combined with the attack decay, gives you quite a few different LFO shapes. It makes it a very, very useful analog LFO in its own right. Now what's happening internally to create an LFO is that as soon as the envelope's done, it's re-triggering the same envelope. Well, the Delta V also has end of cycle outputs for each half. And if I cross patch those, I can get this to create even more complex LFO shapes. So let's go ahead and take the end of cycle from my second control here, run it to the trigger in on number one, end of cycle number one, back to trigger in on number two. Let's go ahead and patch the output up onto the data so you can see what's going on here. And so that we can hear the contribution of both halves, let's go ahead and do a little mixture here of envelope generator one and envelope generator two. And bring that back in to data again so we can see what's going on. Now with a lot of envelope generators, as soon as you patch their ends of cycles into each other, they start cycling immediately. The Delta V needs a little kick to get going. So now one side, the blue side is going, then triggering the green side, which has a different shape and envelope times. And they're cycling between each other. And of course I can change the levels here in the front panel. Or, of course, I can mix them over my utility mixer. But again, having the antenna inverters built in right here means I can go ahead and plug them straight into multiple inputs on the filter, two different filters, etc. Nice arrangement. Stop droning here. And let's talk a little bit more about using the two halves together. I'm going to go ahead and undo my cross trigger patch here. But leave both of them patched through data mixed together here. So you've both seen here what's going on. Since both sides have both a trigger and a slew input, 
you can go ahead and use one side to be an attack pulse and the other side to be a sustained note. So I'm going to turn down the contribution to the first one for now. Dial in. Nice little sustain envelope here. And then start bringing in this other envelope generator to be my tack blip. Move over to the magenta channel so you can see what's going on. And there you see the composite envelope. Have all sorts of fun by having swells after the initial attack. Or have a quick attack there and then have a delayed second pulse. Now that's when I fire the two in parallel. Again, I can fire the two in series, one after the other, by pulling the input from one, using the under trigger output for one, Plug back in my connection here, and have that trigger the second side. So go ahead and have a little blip attack, then the second output. So there's a lot of interesting variations you can come up with, both for envelopes and for LFO sounds, with this dual envelope generator. But the other really cool feature of this thing is that if you plug something into a VCA input, now that audio is routed to the output instead of the CV output for the envelope. I'm going to demonstrate some uses for that in the next movie.